Let's start with sitting up straight. Hands on your knees, back straight, relax your shoulders, close your eyes. And start to inhale and exhale. Long inhalations, long exhalations. Now bring your hands together, start rubbing them together and place them on your closed eyelids. Rub your hands across your face and with a few blinks open your eyes. We'll start with neck rotations. You're going to inhale as your head goes back and exhale as it comes forward. Large circles with your neck. Let's go in the other direction. Inhale as your head goes back and exhale as it comes forward. Now inhale, look up. Exhale, look down. Inhale, look up and exhale, look down. Once again, inhale, look up. Exhale, look down. Come to the center and let's look from side to side. Look as far over your shoulder as you can. And then once again, come back to the center and ear to shoulder. Good, stop the practice. Now interlock your fingers together. Extend the arms up and slightly back. Yeah, imagine that you're pulling the arms away from each other. So the fingers have to be tight as you pull the arms away. And that extends your armpits also. But relax your shoulders. Strategy, relax the shoulders. Do not keep the shoulders so tight and up near the ears. Good. Now release your arms. Right hand on left knee and twist back. Try and look over your left shoulder also. And then come back to the center and once again interlock your fingers together. Extend the arms up and slightly back. Then release your arms, left hand on right knee and twist back. Look over your right shoulder. Good, and then come back. Now place your hands on the floor in front of you. Walk your hands forward and place the forehead, nose, or chin on the floor. Slowly walk your hands back. And then pl place both hands on either side of the right knee and then walk forward. And slowly walk your hands back. Both hands on either side of the left and walk forward. And walk back. Now place your hand flat on the floor next to you. Reach out with the left hand and then look up at the ceiling. Yeah, open the chest. Push this hand which is extended, push it behind you so that you feel that you're opening up the side of the body. Good, come back and now let's do the same thing on the other side. So you're going to extend the right hand out Widen the shoulder, look up at the ceiling. Good, and then come back. Now come on all fours, hands and knees on the floor. Yeah, and then start with your tiger breathing. So you're going to inhale, push your belly button to the floor, look up. Exhale, push your chin into your chest, curve your back, pull the tailbone in. Inhale, look up. Exhale, push your chin into your chest, curve to the back, pull the tailbone in. Once again, inhale, look up. And exhale, push your chin into your chest, curve your back, pull the tailbone in. Come back to your base position, start your wrist stretches. Turn the hands around until they face you, and then turn them back. 
So just several times, turn them around and turn them back. Yeah. Now stop with both hands facing you. Start to rock back and forth. And side to side. Good. Now stop the practice. Bring your hands back to their original positions. Place your toes on the floor. Lift your knees up off of the floor. Push your tailbone up. Keep your knees bent and you can lift your heels up. To elevate the tailbone, you can lift the heels up. Keep the knees bent. Widen the shoulders. Expand the chest, expand the rib cage, and then slowly start to straighten one leg, then the other leg, and you're gently walking in place, and then straighten both legs, push the tailbone up, tighten your thighs, push the thighs back. Good. Now inhale, bring the right leg forward on the outside of the right hand. Place the left knee on the floor. Push the hips down, stay there. Look forward and stay there. Focus more on your left hip. Push the left hip down. Bring it down. Feel that extension of the psoas muscle. Now look over your right shoulder at your left ankle. And then come back to the center and now try to place your elbows on the floor and stay there. Keep exhaling, relax the groin. Yes, the more you relax the groin, the more you'll be able to push the hips down. Good, bring the hands back on the floor and take the right leg back. And then bring the left leg forward. Place the right knee on the floor and stay here. Look forward, push the hips down. Push the hips down. Now look over your left shoulder at your right ankle. And then come back. And now place your left elbow on the floor and keep sinking the hips down. Sorry, put both elbows on the floor and then keep pushing both hips down. Relax your groin and notice how when you relax then you can go further down, closer to the floor. Breathe. Good. Now place both hands on the floor, go back into your downward dog. Now bring your feet closer in the downward dog. Press the thighs in to each other. You can lift the heels up, that helps in lengthening the back. And you really press the thighs together. Good. Now inhale, bring the right leg forward in between both hands. Place the left knee on the floor, push your hips down. Push the hips down, stay there. Yeah, and try to lift the chest up. Good, rock from side to side. Good, now push that heel into the floor and extend the leg back. Come forward and extend the leg back and come forward again and extend the leg back. Good. And then come forward. Let's switch legs now. Take the right leg back. Bring the left leg forward. Right knee on the floor. Push the hips down. Lengthen the spine. Rock from side to side. Good. Now push that heel into the floor and extend the leg back. Good. 
Come forward and extend the leg back. Then come forward again and extend the leg back. Good. And then come forward and let's bring the right leg forward also. Keep a little bit of a gap between both feet. Allow the head to drop down, arms dangling forward, top of the head facing the floor. Equalize the body weight. There's a tendency to push back on the heels. Try to refrain from doing that. Try to come slightly forward so that even the toes start to work. And then slowly, vertebra by vertebra, let's roll ourselves up to a standing position. Good. Okay. Bring your feet together. Hands in the Namaskar Mudra. And let's begin. Inhale, take your hands all the way up. Exhale, bend forward. Right leg back. Left leg back. Knees, chest, chin down. Bhujangasana. Parvatasana. Right leg forward, left leg forward, inhale all the way up and back. Inhale, take your hands all the way up, exhale, bend forward, left leg back, right leg back, knees, chest, chin down, Bhujangasana, Parvatasana, left leg forward, right leg forward, inhale all the way up and back. Inhale, take your hands all the way up, exhale, bend forward, right leg back, left leg back, knees, chest, chin down, Bhujangasana, Parvatasana, Right leg forward, left leg forward, inhale all the way up and back. Inhale, take your hands all the way up, exhale, bend forward, left leg back, right leg back, knees, chest, chin down, Bhujangasana, Parvatasana, left leg forward, right leg forward, inhale all the way up and back. Inhale, take your hands all the way up, exhale, bend forward, right leg back, left leg back, knees, chest, chin down, Bhujangasana, Parvatasana, Right leg forward, left leg forward, inhale all the way up and back. Inhale, take your hands all the way up, exhale, bend forward, left leg back, right leg back, knees, chest, chin down, Bhujangasana, Parvatasana, left leg forward, right leg forward, inhale all the way up and back. Inhale, take your hands all the way up, exhale, bend forward, right leg back, left leg back, knees, chest, chin down, Bhujangasana, Parvatasana, Right leg forward, left leg forward, inhale all the way up and back. Inhale, take your hands all the way up, exhale, bend forward, left leg back, right leg back, knees, chest, chin down, Bhujangasana, Parvatasana, left leg forward, right leg forward, inhale all the way up and back. Inhale, take your hands all the way up, exhale, bend forward, right leg back, left leg back, knees, chest, chin down, Bhujangasana, Parvatasana, Right leg forward, left leg forward, inhale all the way up and back. Inhale, take your hands all the way up, exhale, bend forward, left leg back, right leg back, knees, chest, chin down, Bhujangasana, Parvatasana, left leg forward, right leg forward, inhale all the way up and back. Last one, inhale, take your hands all the way up, exhale, bend forward, right leg back, left leg back, knees, chest, chin down, Bhujangasana, Parvatasana, Right leg forward, left leg forward, inhale all the way up and back. Inhale, take your hands all the way up, exhale, bend forward, left leg back, right leg back, knees, chest, chin down, Bhujangasana, Parvatasana, left leg forward, right leg forward, inhale all the way up and back. Good. Go into your child's pose. Rest. Rest the forehead, rest the spine, breathe. Breathe. All right, now come into your downward dog, feet together. Everybody elevate the tailbone up. Everybody elevate the tailbone up. By lifting the heels up. Lift the heels up. Press the thighs into each other. Press the inner edges of the knees into each other. Widen the shoulder blades. 
Press the thumbs into the floor. Now step forward, Uttanasana, feet together. Fingertips on the floor. Body weight equally distributed between your heels and your toes. Do not allow the head to hang down. Yes, lift the head up. Even if it's hanging down, uh, even if it's going down, it shouldn't hang. There should still be some amount of life on the head, on the neck. Now go back into your downward dog. Hands on the floor, feet together. Roll the thighs in as you push the thighs into each other. The knees touching, the inner edges of your feet touching. Push the tailbone up. Yes, lift the tailbone. Press the hands down. Widen the shoulders. Widen the expanse of your rib cage. Good. Ex come forward. Uttanasana. Feet together. Feet together. Now slowly in Uttanasana, you're going to start to walk your hands back. Okay, so you're going to walk the hands back. See if you can walk them past the, the uh, where your feet are, the position of your feet. So it's like the hands are extended back, they're on the floor and that is enabling you to bring the chest closer to the knees. Micro bend the knees slightly, you can just slightly micro bend and then keep walking back further. You can bend the knees slightly and keep walking back, good. Now bring the hands back and now go back into your downward dog, go back into the downward dog. Roll the thighs in, press the thighs into each other, lift the heels up, push the tailbone back. Good. Now place the left foot on the floor at an angle and you're going to bring the right leg forward for your Parshva Uttanasana. So straighten both legs. Try, the, the right leg might feel a little stiff right now, so you bend it and straighten. Bend and straighten. Just several times you're bending and straightening. Yeah. And when you straighten the right leg, imagine that you're widening the hamstrings. Keep the back foot, the left foot, firm on the floor. Yes. Okay. Now switch legs. So we're going to take the right leg back. Put it at an angle on the floor and bring the left leg forward. And now the same thing, you're going to bend and straighten. And it's important to use your right leg also because otherwise the hip goes to sleep. If you don't keep that right foot pressed firmly into the floor, then the hip goes to sleep. So you want to push that right hip down, right foot down, as well as trying to widen the left hamstrings. Good. Let's go back into the downward dog. Knees on the floor. Relax. Child's pose. Relax. Rest your legs. Rest the forehead. Okay, now once again, let's come into the downward dog, feet together. Now bring the right leg forward again for Parshva Uttanasana. Back foot on the floor. Again, good grip on the floor with both, both feet. And then slowly start to walk your hands back in this also. So you're pressing the hands down, walking them back. As you press them down, your upper body is lengthening. Yes, press the feet down into the floor. You see it becomes easier to push the hands also. When the feet are firm on the floor, the, the fingertips go down very easily. Yes, let's switch legs. Let's take the right leg back, left leg forward. And again, start to walk your hands back. And as you do that, press the hands down 
push the right foot into the floor more strongly and walk the hands back. Bring the hand forward, leg back. Lift the tailbone up, widen your hips. And now step forward uh, in Uttanasana, legs wide. Legs wide. And come into your Malasana, squat down, Malasana. Yes. And then stand up, Uttanasana. And go down, Malasana. Just several times, just working on the mobility of the knee and the hips. Now go back up into Uttanasana. And down, Malasana. Yes, try your best. Okay, up, Uttanasana. So, okay, you need to try to get the heels down. And then down to Malasana. Okay, and now sit down. Sit down. Okay, fire lock posture. Left foot on the uh, left leg on the floor, right leg on top for the fire lock. Yeah, try your best. Now walk your hands forward. Walk your hands forward. Nisha, can you turn towards me and do this? I just want to see the position of your. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, walk the hands forward. Good. Walk your hands back. Now switch legs. Switch legs. Yeah. And then walk forward again. Relax the groin. Good. Come up. Come up. Okay. Now. You're going to sit with your legs forward like this. Place the right foot on top of the left knee. Right foot on top of the left knee. Like we sometimes do this during the uh, cool down also. Now walk this left leg back so that it's near the left hip. So that it's near the left hip. Yeah, we just see how, uh, you know, like how loose the lower body is right now. Okay. And then try to push this knee down on the floor. You do lift the hip, left hip up and then push this right knee down to the floor. Now with the knee down on the floor, can you pull this right foot in closer to the thigh? Be careful. Be careful with this, especially if you have knee pain or knee problems or uh, if you've injured your knee. Yeah, be careful with this. Okay, now release. Release. Now the same thing on the other side. So let's put the left foot on top of the right knee. And then walk that right knee leg in close to the hip. And now push this knee down to the floor. Up till this everybody is okay. Only when you have severe knee pain then you can do this. But otherwise by and large everybody can do till here. Okay, now slowly pull this left leg into the groin and be careful. This is where it gets tricky for knee, knee problems. Okay, good. Okay, so remember this. Okay, now go into your downward dog. Undo the legs, go into your downward dog. Take the feet apart actually. In downward dog, take the feet apart. Widen the hamstrings. Yes, open the hip and now step forward, Uttanasana and stand up. Okay, now if you want a block, uh, we're going to do Trikonasana, a bunch of standing asanas. If you want a block, you can use a block. It's not necessary. Yeah. Take your legs wide apart. Yeah. Wide actually, like wider than you usually do. So maybe wider for you. Yeah. Uh, place the block behind the right foot. Turn the right foot out. Good. Micro bend this knee. The right knee, you can bend it slightly. Okay. Don't keep it like extremely uh, straight. 
you can bend it slightly. That will help you get in touch with the groin, especially the inner groin muscles. Now, inhale, take your hands up. Exhale, take your hands out to the sides. Now, extend to the right side and then place your hand anywhere that you can reach or on the block that you have. Yes, we, we try to straighten the, uh, the upper body. Knee can remain slightly bent and at the same time, you, it is possible to straighten the upper body. So focus on that. Sometimes it's possible to straighten the upper body even better when your knee is uh, slightly bent. Press the right hand down into your leg. Extend the left hand up. Widen the chest, push the hip forward. Good, and come up. Hands on the waist, right leg in, left leg out. Here also you're gonna micro bend the knee a little bit, slightly. Inhale, take your hands up. Exhale, take your hands out to the sides. Now extend to the left side, place your hand anywhere that you can reach, take the other hand up. And notice how much more difficult it is to maintain a slightly bent knee. It's so easy to straighten that knee and to like have a hard bend, like a hard uh, straight joint. But it's very difficult to keep the joint soft and keep working in this posture. So get used to like controlling the joint a little bit, you know, so bending it slightly, only so much that it doesn't impact the rest of the posture. Good. Come up. Hands on the waist. Now uh, point the toes forward like we do when we start this posture. And then you're gonna place your hands on the floor. Keep looking forward, place the hands, push the hands down and look forward. Body weight on the toes and the heels equally. Now walk your hands forward like you do for Adho Mukha Swanasana, for downward dog. So you're reaching the hands forward as the tailbone pushes back. Hold it. Hmm. Now slowly walk your hands back. Back to the original positions and then keep walking the hands further back. Like we did in Parshva Uttanasana, just keep walking your hands back and maybe beyond the position uh, or the line of your feet and maybe to the back of the mat, all the way back to the mat of the mat and push the thumbs and your fingertips down into the floor. See what happens to the back when you have an active, uh, active arms. And then come back to the center. See if you can place your elbows on the floor. Keep pushing the feet also down. You really have to press the entire foot, entire sole of the foot down. Good. And then stand up. Walk the legs in. Walk the legs in. Good. Three, uh, three pose, rikshasana. Take the right hand up. Ah, actually, let's put a spin on the tree pose today. So the right leg will go up. Right hand comes up and you do garudasana. With the arms, you do Garudasana. Yeah. In Garudasana, the left hand comes down, right hand is on the top. Hmm. Switch legs and switch arms. So left leg comes up. So left hand will be uh, up, right hand down. So the right hand is supporting the left hand. Yeah, look at a point on the floor. If, if you keep uh, talking or looking here and there, then it's difficult to balance. Yeah, good. Good, release, release. Now, uh, take your blocks if you have. Take two blocks uh, and take a uh, wall. If you don't have a wall easily available, use a chair. Okay, we're basically going to lift one leg up and place it on top of the wall or on top of your um, chair. Okay, for this one Nidhi, you can repeat Parshva Uttanasana. So do Uttanasana, Parshva Uttanasana. Keep very, uh, uh, keep going in between these. 
use the variations. Yeah, okay. Now, come forward so that there's enough space behind you. You're going to lift the right leg up and place it uh, on top of the, the wall. Keep your feet together. Place your hands on your blocks. If you don't have blocks, place your hands, uh, place the fingertips on the floor. Yeah, maybe you can take, a, uh, use your blocks for this. Yeah, and widen the legs. Okay, everybody else, rotate the thighs inwards, press the thighs in towards each other. When you press in, then you can, you'll notice that the glutes widen, the hips widen. Gitanthi, come slightly forward. And don't lean forward on your arms. Yeah. Yes, like that. Okay, good, Renny. Okay. Raji, feet together. Nisha, feet together. Yeah, bring your feet together. Everybody, your feet should be together. Good. Okay, now lift the right leg up and place it on, uh, on the wall. Yes, rotate the right thigh in and down. Think of the tip of the right hip, pull it down. Pull it down. Push the, le the right, uh, the ankle into the wall. Keep pushing down into your blocks. Switch legs, switch legs. Yes, now left leg goes up. Nidhi, you've taken the left leg back. So good. Now the instructions are for everybody. Pull that left hip down. Pull it forward. Align both thighs. Align both hip joint, uh, both hips. The right hip, left hip. Both should be in one line. Rotate the right thigh in. Rotate the left thigh in. See what happens when both thighs rotate, rotate in at the same time. Then there's a relaxation to the tailbone, to the lower back. Good. Bring the left leg down, right leg up. Yes. This time, think about the right shin. Push that shin up. Imagine that you have to lengthen it and that the shin is lifting the leg up. You're still using the wall. You're still pushing into the wall, but the focus shifts from the foot to the shin. Good. Bring the leg down and the other leg up. Press the hands down into the block. What that does is it equalizes the body weight. Otherwise, we're usually pushing down into the blocks, which means we're leaning into the blocks. But the whole point of pushing down into the blocks is to lift the chest up. You know, so you're not dropping down, you're not dropping forward. You're lifting up even though you're pushing down. There's that equal and opposite movement. Good. Come down. Come down. Bring the leg down. Everybody squat down. Squat down. Walk the hands forward. Yeah, try to keep your heels down on the, on the floor. Good, come up. And bring uh, this, the mat away from the wall. And set up for your warrior two. So take the legs wide. really wide. It's usually wider than Trikonasana. Good. Now turn the right foot out. Yeah. Inhale, take your hands up. Exhale, take your hands out to the sides. Bend fr from the knee, but you push from the inner groin. You push these muscles forward. They are responsible for opening that knee, for pushing that knee forward and hold it. Press the back thigh down. Tighten it. Tighten that thigh. 
Hold. Hold. Renny, you're leaning too far forward. Push back. Everybody push your hips forward. Nisha, that's good. Push the hips forward. Satya, sink down more. Sink down more. Good. Straighten the legs, everybody. And now place the right hand anywhere you can reach on your, le on your uh, right foot, right leg, and then look up. Lengthen the upper one. Push the hips forward. Tighten your left thigh and push the hips forward. Good. And then come up. Hands down. Right leg in. Take the left leg out. Take your hands up. Take your hands out to the sides. Think about your inner groin. Left inner groin as you sink down. The inner groin has to feel like it's pushing the knee out. Stay here. Tighten the back thigh. Stay. Push the hip forward. Stay here. Breathe. Yes. Good. Now straighten the left leg and bring the left hand down on this leg and take the right hand up. Good. And come up and hands down. Walk your legs in. Walk the legs in. Okay. Now, take your feet a little wider than hip width. Okay. Just slightly wider but less than the distance of the mat. Good. You're going to place your hands on the waist. Elbows are going back. And then you're going to bend forward from the waist. Elbows are still going back. So the chest is open. Now finally place your fingertips on the floor. Straighten the arms so that you can look forward. Look forward and then bend your elbows and bring the chest closer and closer to the floor. Refrain from getting the body weight on the toes. Push it back on the heels and then press the toes down. Yes, bring your chest forward, bring it forward. Now straighten your body again, upper body. Just straighten it. Yes. And now hold the big toes with the first two fingers of your hands. Yes. Some of you may have to bend the knees for this. That's fine. But you try to straighten. Now bend your elbows and bring your chest closer and closer to the floor again. Keep pressing the heels down. Keep pressing the toes down. Good. And then straighten up again. Straighten just the torso again. Good. Now, bring the hands out and then you're going to step on the hands. So lift the right leg up. Place the right hand under the foot and the same thing with the left so that the toes and the wrists are touching. And then again, bend your elbows and sink down. Sink down. Straighten your arms, fingertips on the floor, come up. And now if you have a, um, a block, take a block. If you have a bolster or a pillow, take that. If you have a blanket, keep that also. And keep your rope also with you if you have a rope. So everything, blocks, um, bolster, blanket and rope. First, place your uh, like block. If you have a block, you can you can place that on the floor and sit. Sit on top of that block or that bolster. So you just need a little height under your hips. Take your legs forward, and then make sure that you're not sitting square on top of this. Whatever you're sitting on, it should not be sitting square on top of it. You have to move slightly forward so that. You feel the, the glute, like the skin is being pulled back. So you feel like you're just perched on it. You're not really sitting square on top of it. Yeah. And now, reach forward. Hold the outer edges of your feet. And if you need a belt, go ahead and use the belt to do that. Tighten your thighs. Push the thighs down. 
push the thighs down. Straighten the back. Raji, engage your core. Engage your ab abdominal muscles. Straighten the back. More. Roll the thighs in. Everybody roll the thighs in. Sharpen that back. Good, Rani. Satya, don't look down. Lift the chest up. Lift the sternum up. Roll the shoulder, shoulders back. Good. Okay, come up. Now, everybody bend your knees uh, and sit in your Sukhasana. So now you can sit square on top of whatever you're sitting and you sit in Sukhasana. Now place your left hand on the right knee and twist. Yeah. Lift the sternum up. Keep the back the arms straight. So which means if, you, if the back elbow is bending, you have to push the hand down further into the floor and allow the chest to lift up, sides of the body to lift up. Okay, switch sides, right hand on the left knee and then twist. And come back. Okay. Now if you have, if you're sitting on a bolster, make it vertical. If you're not sitting on a bolster, you're fine. Okay. Now, uh, take a pillow, uh, sorry, not a pillow, uh, like a blanket or, or um, a towel, something. Okay, fold it. Fold it so that it's slightly thick, thickish. It doesn't, uh, there's no specific length, but it should be a little thick. Okay, yeah, so it could be a thin uh, pillow, uh, thin like um, uh, cushion also. So if you have one of those thin ones lying around, you can use that also. Okay, now the left leg will be forward. But you're bending the right leg in, in Veer Asana. So we don't want to make it a very hard bend. So you can place this pillow or this blanket under, like between your thigh and your shin. And then bend this leg. Then bend it. So this, this uh, thing, like your pillow or your blanket will be pushing into the shin. You'll be able to feel it. Yeah. And then if you feel that it's too uncomfortable and you, and you feel you cannot balance, then that means this is too thick and so you make it thinner. So you rotate this leg, make the, keep this as a thin, like very thin blanket and then sit down. But you should be able to feel the impact it has on the knee. Okay. It does, not only is it pushing down into the shin, but it relaxes the knee also. There is that impact and if it's not doing that then you have to roll it more or you have to change something about this keep the back straight this right knee does come into the left knee so the knee is not moving out to the side it is pointing straight forward and now you're sitting on your left hip so mrs rishi for you you can keep the maximum you can keep the maximum uh, size for this thing that's under yeah keep the maximum good okay now everybody push the left heel out yeah push it out when you push the left heel out automatically the thigh also starts to react and that's what you want now take your belt place it around the balls uh, of your left foot pull that foot in elevate the chest up elevate the chest yeah. Renny, don't rest the hands. Walk the hands like slightly forward so that they're not resting down. Yeah. Keep the back straight. Nisha, try to pull that right knee in closer to the left knee because your knee is moving out to the side. Yes, you have to pull it in. Yes. Satya, same with you. You'll have to pull that right knee in. This is Triyang Mukha. Uh, ek Pada Asana. Pull those toes in more. If you feel a stretch on the hamstrings, that's good. If you don't, you have to pull those toes in more. Lift the chest up. Who's feeling a stretch? 
Raise your hand if you're feeling a stretch in this. Okay. All right. Good. Now the same thing on the other side. Now remove this blanket and then you'll have to shift yourself so that whatever you're sitting on is now under your right side. Yeah. And then bend your left. Come into your Virasana, half Virasana. Hmm. Sometimes when your legs are very tired, you know, like maybe after a run or after a long day, this variation of Virasana is good. You, you place something under the thighs. Sometimes regular Virasana without any props doesn't give you that much relief, but you place something in between your thigh and your shin, and immediately there's a lot of relief that you get. Okay, now push the right uh, heel out, press the right knee leg down. So you're widening the hamstrings, pushing that leg down. Now use your belt and pull the, uh, the toes in, open the chest. Yeah. And if there's anyone who's not feeling a stretch, uh, you can raise your hand and then we'll see. If you're not feeling a stretch. Mm -hmm. Ms. Rishi, come forward slightly. You're leaning too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, straighten your body, upper body, straighten it more. And you can hold closer to the foot. Yes, and then straighten the body. Yes. So there's always this tussle, like you're pulling that foot back. But at the same time, the foot is pulling you forward. So there always has to be that uh, interaction between the foot and your upper body. It's not that you're comfortably sitting. You are being pulled forward by the foot. Okay, release. Release. Uh, now you could keep this, uh, the, you know, the soft thing for your knee. We, we might need it. But now come down on the floor and remove whatever you are sitting on. Okay, now extend the right leg out and your left leg is bent. Yeah, the left leg is bent like Janushri Shasana, but that's not what we're doing. Now place your right foot like what we did in, in the beginning, sorry, left foot on the right knee and bend. Bend this leg, so the right knee uh, is, is bending and it's close to your chest and the left knee is going close to the floor. Yeah, so bend your right leg, bend it. Okay, now place this right knee on the floor and come into this position. The right knee is on the floor, uh, sorry, left knee is on the floor, left foot is up near the right knee and stay there. Stay there, one hand is on the floor and stay there. I don't know if this is clear. Yeah. Yes, everybody can do this. Everybody can do this. Yes, okay, come down. Now, if you feel pain in this knee which is on the floor, I mean, if you feel pain, you know, that it's bending, not because of the contact it has with the floor, then you can also place something underneath, like in between the, uh, the shin and the thigh, and then do the same thing. It gives you traction for the knee. So you could do the same thing, okay? Even if you have knee pain. If the floor is hurting, then just bend your mat, fold the mat. Okay, same thing on the other side. Same thing on the other side. So this time, right foot on top of the left knee. And then place the knee on the floor and come up. Come up. Yeah, you're using one hand on the floor and you're lifting up. Good. Good, come down. You can probably see where we're going with this. Now you're going to try to balance. Okay? Now if you want to balance, you need a strong, uh, stable surface. So usually it's better if you fold the mat. Uh, and you can even make it like more than one folds. Okay, now 
Again, left foot on top of the right knee. Bend the right leg. And now you're going to sit up. Like you're going to try and uh, stand up like this. Vatyayan Asana. Okay? Also known as horse pose for some reason. Yes, good. Good. And then come out. Good, Mindy. Yeah, come out. Now the same thing on the other side. Same thing on the other side. Yeah, so again, I'm, now I'm going to bend the other side of the mat so that I can rest my right knee on that. Yeah? And also when you come up, you can slide this right foot closer to the groin. Okay? So, Mrs. Rishi, then it, it's a more important for you to have something between the shin and the uh, this because, you know, but keep it thick. Yeah. Okay. Now, Again, try to stand up. Vatyayan Asana. Try to stand up. Hmm. Yes, Monica, that's actually a good idea. So, Mrs. Rishi, you could also place this foot on the floor. So, instead of, you know, uh, get, getting the foot here, you can obviously practice like that also. But you could keep the leg down there also. You know, like, I mean, you don't have to bend like this. Okay, you don't have to, you can keep it back. So it still gives you that, you know, that sort of balancing thing. Now let's complete the posture, guys. Come to the other side. Come down. Again, take your left knee down on the floor. Right foot on the floor, left knee down on the floor. In the final posture, you have to get your legs, uh, you have to get your hands in Garuda Asana. Okay, that is the complete Vatyana Asana. So now, Knee on the floor, left knee on the floor. Stand up and get your leg, get your arms in Garudasana. <laughs> get your arms in Garudasana. Yeah. Yeah. Good, Nisha. Good, Nidhi. Nice. Good, guys. Very nice. Good. Come down. Come down. Let's do the same thing on the other side. Very good. Yeah, fold the mat and let's do the same thing. So you're lifting up, find that balance and then come into Gardasana. Yes, and you are slightly bent forward. If you try to straighten up, then you might fall back. So you are bending slightly forward. Uh, Raji, get your left foot Forward. Bring it forward. Don't keep it too close to that knee. Bring it forward. Yes. Now try. Now go up. Good, Nisha. Very good. Yeah. Garudasana arms. Good. And come down. Come down. Shake the legs out. Relax. Shake the legs out. Now, if you want, go ahead and try Padmasana. Okay. Because you stretched the knee. We worked on the knees today. So... Come into, uh, just experiment with your Padmasana. Are you able to do it? Are you able to pull this, uh, both legs closer and closer to the groin? Pull the legs in. Yeah, so even if you can do uh, Padmasana, it's also about pulling the legs closer and closer in, giving a very compact lower body. Now the same thing on the other side. So, yeah, so switch legs. Whichever leg was on the top will come below now. And keep pulling that leg in. Nice. Good. Very nice. Good. Come out. Come out, relax the legs, and then go into your Shavasana. Relax. Use something soft under the head and release. Go down into your Shavasana. 
keep exhaling completely let go of the body Now gently bring your hands together in the Namaskar Mudra. Start rubbing your hands together. Yeah, come out. Start rubbing your hands together. Place your hands on your closed eyelids. Rub your hands across your face and with a few blinks, open your eyes. Okay, I'm going to unmute anyone, uh, everybody, in case you have any questions. Kashi was distracting me. I like, forgot the last few lines. <laughs> Kashi, you made me forget the Shavasana lines because you were going all over the screen. Everybody had to just get up. <laughs> oh gosh, I got distracted. Anyways, anyone have any questions? When you were doing the Dikod uh, Asana and you asked us to micro-bend the yeah. knee, Yes. The one which was outside. Uh, I felt it was easier to push the hips forward. Is that possible? Yes, it is. Yes. Yeah. Because what happens is that, you know, when... Uh, when you have like lots of years of practice, you get so used to doing the trikonasana with the, like a tight knee, you know? Yeah. And, and, yeah. A, and a tight knee is essentially 
a tight like tight body you know because the knee is not tight on its own it's like the rest of the muscles which are also participating in that tightness so yes when, once you relax the knee then it is you know like the muscles also relax and then there, it, there's a possibility to open yeah the bone asana used to be very strenuous for me earlier on because you know i really had to push the hips i had to get the chest open yeah i wanted to get the you know alignment right i wanted the legs also to be straight and all of that hmm. today uh, i i thought it was easier to get into the bone asana i felt as if it was better hmm. i mean you like you have to tell me but it was better looking but it was easier for me to get into it and it was more relaxed and like hmm. i could stay in that longer compared to a regular yeah the bone asana yeah so now what, you, what the next step is to take this ease that you have you know because basically the tightness comes because the knee is so tight like we have tightened all the bones and the joints in the body so there's no space for rotation however if you keep the joints relaxed you know if you keep that that knee joint like relaxed if you keep the ankles relaxed but you tighten the rest of the body the uh, the muscles you know like if you engage yeah. the muscles not really tightening but like engaging yeah. the muscles then there is still a possibility of uh, openness you know but that ease yeah. that you're talking about that's the ease which uh, that we want in all of the asanas you know so um, you know at at a particular point in your practice we we look at asanas like that like what can i do to make it easy yet keep the correct alignment you know and what you're describing is right that okay you know i'm bending it slightly like it's a micro bend it's not like a full yeah. bend Yeah. and i'm able to hold it longer like these are the words you know i'm able to hold it longer i'm able to open the chest easier so um it, it's worth it's a lot less strain on the lower back yeah. because when you try to push the legs forward with your knees you know rigid yeah. it's a lot less strain in the lower back yeah today it wasn't there it was like it was like now i understand why the downward dog is a relaxing asana i understand that now so today i got that for tripona Okay that's great yeah so that's we have to look at postures like that because with a uh, long term yoga practitioners what happens is you get so used to just um, you know tighten this tighten that and then you know get into the posture and then you get used to like that discomfort that happens but we have to periodically like stop and look at each asana individually yeah you know it is very nice to do thank you thanks yeah any other questions uh so when we were doing the last asana for the name vatyayana asana yeah yeah so when you when i'm bending my left left knee or the foot and my left ankle is also bending it slightly and that that is hurting so i couldn't do it yeah yeah, yeah. to do to make it better yeah so uh, that's because the the metatarsals like the top of the leg the foot like the these muscles are tight like because we never stretch them you know so things that you could do is like uh, you could do virasana like before we did this posture we did uh, you know half virasana extending the other yeah so these are the things that you need to do it happens to a lot it's like padmasana like a lot of people feel the same pain in padmasana so uh, what you can can do is you can try to flex the foot so instead of doing this you can still keep it on top of the other foot other leg and try to flex it push the the heel out you know okay. because yeah cuz then you maintain the same posture the same position but this this uh, you know this extension is not there okay yeah any okay. other yes nidhi yeah so when we were doing that virasana uh, one of like uh, one leg straight and other leg uh, yeah they you said we can feel something but i didn't feel any uh, not even any. on hamstrings Mm. okay then you just yeah then remove the belt and uh, hold the foot with your hands okay yeah and that's all yeah any other questions yeah kashvi has a question uh, everybody else here is free to log off <laughs> well, thank you for your questions all right thank you thanks guys thank you yes <laughs> See that's a fish pose. Yes. Can she she's asking if you can do this. <laughs> yes, I can do this. Try. <laughs> Try? I can do this, but I'm not going to do this right now. You know this whole thing is being filmed, Kashi. Please <laughs> <laughs> we'll send us a video. Yeah, I'll send you a video.
ओके बाय बाय बाय